Hi, everybody. It's a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to continue the exploration into Ming An and Hua Jin's and tie that into a, uh, a meditation that we did uh, on this on this site about uh, about a year ago and uh, I'd like to bring that back and that would be the grass dragon meditation but we're going to do it uh, as uh, without stepping today so just be really focusing on the Ming An and Hua aspects of that so just to review from last week we talked about the these three levels of Jin that are talked about primarily in the Xing Yi Quan tradition and but is applicable to all the internal martial arts and the basically three levels one is that the Ming level is the most obvious uh, level that's where you're using your your physicality to trans uh, transform it into chi. So that is you're you're doing things physically, which is going to to allow you to to make this transformation into into energy. And so that that's that the basic level. And here you're using your your physicality, your muscles, your connective tissue, you're working out the kinks in your physical body so the energy can, can first of all build up to a higher level and second to circulate freely and to remove the kinks in the hose so that the energy can move more freely. So this is that's like a really fundamental level and it's and uh, it's essential for everything going forward. And it's a level that most Tai Chi practitioners and most martial, most internal martial arts never really get past that level. That is of doing this physical activity in order to get more and better chi, and and that's perfectly cool. And it's uh, it it works fantastic in that context. And um, I'm going to correlate that to something that uh, Cheng Man Ching talks about. He talks about the human earth and heaven levels of, of, of Kung Fu, of your practice. And so this would correspond to the, to the human level. That is, you're doing stuff to, to get your physical body in a, the appropriate condition and, and working out the, the structures necessary to allow the chi to flow where you want it to flow allow it to move through the path of least resistance. Then we, from there, we move to the on an uh, level, which is, Anjin is uh, where we're going, it's called the hidden level. And that's where you're using your energy to convert to, to Shen or spirit. And so this is, the transition where we where the chi is we is so much a part of our awareness and so much a part of of our self identity that we can then convert that to an even higher level of insubstantiality and that is the shen level which is spirit that's like your personal spirit so your ability to, to function is you're able to do things with your chi and to be able to direct it with your shen, your spirit. And then the third level is hua. And this is where spirit transforms into emptiness. And so if we've gone from the obvious to the hidden to the mysterious so and that is where you rather than the chi doing the work the, your, your intention is doing the work the chi and the body follow your intention 
And so you're able to just direct things uh, intentionally and you make stuff happen. This is where we get into what you would might call the way wu way phase where you're you're just placing an intention and it's action based in non-action. So uh, action based in in being. So we we uh, go from uh, it said uh, Master Young said that the uh, the second level, the the on level begins where the um, when stillness or uh, emptiness has reached its zenith, where you've you moved into such a state of being that it's at that you're able to act from that. And uh, so this is the opposite of the Ming level where you're doing stuff to get to the get to the energy. And then as you go into the into the on level, then it's like you're doing less and less to and and getting more result from it. And then we get into the third level, which is the heaven level in uh, and Cheng Man Ching's language, and that that's where it's magic. You know, stuff is uh, stuff seems to happen. And uh, let me just read you a quote from him because it actually is, I kind of kind of like this. It uh, it tells a really good story there for for that level. It says when the chi reaches the highest level and becomes mental energy, it is called spiritual power or the power without physical force. Whenever, wherever the eyes concentrate, the spirit reaches and the chi follows. The chi can mobilize the body, but you need not will the chi in order to move it. The spirit can carry the chi with it. The spiritual power is called divine speed. The potential is unlimited. And he called this level the level of omnipotence, which seemed to be maybe overstating the case just a tad, but it's uh it's really cool uh at that at that heaven level which is corresponds to the hua level that we find in in xing yi so we practice that like i say it it something that most people do just fine in their in their practice without even thinking about the on and the and the uh hua levels but we can practice all three of these by going big, medium, and small. And we then become familiar with the template for this, these levels of insubstantiality, substantial and insubstantial. And the one of the key things about these three is that they are all interrelated. So it's not like, oh, I'm, I'm in the Hua level and I don't have to uh, do any of this other stuff. No, no, it, at the... The, the highest level, you're still engaging the Ming. You're still engaging the physicality. You're still engaging the, the effort that is necessary to make all that happen. It just, you're doing it in a way that is so subtle that it seems like you didn't, you're not doing anything. And that's where we... We get this the the really cool stuff happening in 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 the internal martial arts. So we're going to play with that, and then we're going to go into the uh, the grass dragon. And just to review that, the grass dragon is one of three Bagua dragons, and it's the it's the most substantial of the three. It's where it's kind of this integration of water and earth uh, energies, and it's low, it's very sinewy, and um, very grounded and um, uh, directed, very intense. And uh, so we're going to play around with that. And one of the characteristics of, of that, and this is something that I like to apply to all the martial arts, but it's uh, particularly pronounced in this grass dragon meditation is the tail. And we talked about this and, you know, a long, 
long time ago in, in this class, but the, the tale is where you, you're imagining this, this, this dragon tail, right where a dragon tail should be, right there at the tip of your tailbone, and you have it extending behind you, and it's, it's kind of working back and forth, and it is providing a counteraction to the arm movements, so that the tail is wagging to the to the right as your left hand comes out, and uh, and so your your um, or I'm sorry your your left hand moves to the to the right as your tail I'm going to put that one, tail wags to the right right hand goes to the left that's that's it tail moves to the to the left as your left hand moves to the right so that's the we're going to connect up to that. I'll talk you through it. It's easier to to do it than to, to to talk about it. So we have that, and the other thing that is really um, a key point of this dragon meditation is the fingernails. And you you've got these dragon claws, and this activates the wood chi in your body, and which gets gets into the grass part of that of that idea there, and it connects up your sinews throughout your body. Your connective tissue system gets, gets activated. Also, your liver chi is activated. So that kind of gets this intensity to the movements. And so we have this tail wagging behind you and the, the fingers are reaching out and, and kind of grabbing with the, with the fingernails. And if you just feel that right now, just, just grab your 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 fingers like that and just feel that your hands are relaxed but you're also they're spread the fingers are spread and they're 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 rounded so you're and you're feeling those fingernails and when you do that you can immediately feel the energy in your hands and your forearms and shooting throughout the whole body that wood chi goes throughout there connects all the dots there so we have the these two poles there the tail and the and the hands and they're creating this very powerful cooperative energy, this alchemy of, of chi that, that's occurring there. And so we're going to do that, but we're going to do it Ming, An, and Hua. So that is, you're going to go from, from very big and strong and powerful and, and very obvious to more hidden to to nothing, to emptiness. And um, so that's the, that's the game plan, kids. Let's, uh, let's, why don't you stand up and we'll, uh, we'll get to work here. Okay, let's start with our three pillars. Really establish your connection to the earth and the sky, the big chi. Feel the balls of your feet. It's going to kind of settle into that. Knees are unlocked. And you're centering over the balls of your feet and reaching with the crown of your head tucking in the chin and opening the jade pillow gate. So we'll stop and feel that we're creating this powerful connection through our central equilibrium, our Zhong Ding. And you wanna open the hip joints. You wanna be able to release that and sink down. So you're relaxing, relaxing your butt muscles and allowing your your hips to be free, and you want to line up so that your pelvic bowl is is even and and balanced. Reach with your elbows. And Feel those fingernails. 
I'm going to stay, grab that a moment. Just feel that, feel the, the power that's circulating throughout your body right now. So in order to reach that, that level of spiritual energy that Cheng is talking about, we need lots of chi. The chi has to rise to the spiritual valley in the brain, in the center of the brain. And we do that by opening the jade pillow gate and allowing the jing shan, or the, 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 the vital spirit, the spirit of vitality to rise and to move through into the into the brain. We're also with the tail, we are opening the the ren and do channels, the conception vessel that runs up the center of your uh, the center of your body from your perineum up to the bottom lip. And then we have the the do channel, the governing vessel running from the tip of your coccyx up to up your spine over the top of your head to the top lip. And those two channels are really important for really establishing this reservoir of chi that allows for this, this spiritual energy to manifest. You know, it's still, we still have to to create the structures that allow it to follow the path of least resistance in our body. But it, we begin to do that by getting the do and, and REM channels, open that up and allow that energy to fill and to flow freely. So every time we wag our tail, we are activating these two channels. We're bridging the gap between them, connecting them up and allowing those, the energy to, to be enhanced, to fill up and to be able to then be converted into Shen, spirit. And so now in the balls of your feet and then reach with your wrists and just come up a little bit up to about belt high, fingers are hanging and just feel your arms relax, feel the heaviness of your arms. And then reach with your fingers and open that. And reach out and pull back a bit with your body and just feel those poles in opposition there. And then go to your heels and uh, press down. And sink. And feel the yin, the energy going down, 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 emptying out. Go to the balls of the feet, reach for the wrists, feel that yang impulse there, reaching, reach, open your shoulder, shoulder joints by reaching with your elbows. And come up to chest height now and reach with the fingers and open. Open your, your back, feel between your shoulder blades. Reach with your elbows, reach with your wrists, reach with your fingertips. So this is a very young posture, very expansive. Now go to your heels and reach down with your elbows. Bend the wrists, your arms kind of press down, sink. Everything sinks a very yin now. So we're feeling into the contrast of the yin and the yang. And there's all the yin always contains yang and yang always contains yin, but never in exact proportions. It's always a dynamic relationship between the two. And this has a lot to do with where you put your attention. Put to the balls of your feet, reach with the wrists, yang expansion, reach, 
We're going to go up a little higher now, going up to shoulder height. And reach with the fingertips. Reach with your elbows. Open the shoulder blades. Open the back. Feel that connection. Reach with the crown of your head. Tuck into chin. Feel that young expansion. Opening. Filling. And now with your heels and reach down with your elbows. Sink. And let that all go. Very yin. So that was very Ming, what we just did there. We're using our physicality to to enhance our chi, to transform that physicality into energy. And you can feel the energy that's in your hands, feel it coursing through your body right now. This energy is becoming more substantial now. And now we're going to do that in on chin. So we're gonna go to the ball to your feet, reach with the wrists, come up to belt high, reach with the fingers, very soft. Here we're using the chi convert to Shen. And with your heels, reach down with your elbows, down with your hands, very soft, very yin, hidden. We're taking that energy and converting it into Shen. Into the balls of your feet, reach of the wrists softly reaching. Arms are floating up, reach of the fingers, chest height, very softly reaching. Feel the energy moving. You reach, sink at your heels, reach down with your elbows, hands floating down, nice and relaxed. Feel the chi in your hands. The balls of your feet, reach with your wrists, up to shoulder height, reach with the fingers, open the joints, Notice your mind is very clear. You're transforming the energy into Shen. Sink in your heels, reach out your elbows. Think, feel the in, feel the insubstantiality of it. The chi has become so substantial now that shen is the insubstantial part.
Now we're going to do the qua. This time, raise your arms to raise your wrists to belt height, but don't move. Point with your fingers, but don't move them. Look at your heels, but don't don't move. Feel the yin as you sink down. Move. Feel the balls of your feet, but don't move. And raise your arms to chest height, but don't move. Reach with your fingers and open your back, open the joints, but don't move. Look at your heels. Don't move. Release down. Feel the yin. Go to the balls of your feet, but don't move. And raise your wrists. Shoulder height, but don't move. Reach with your fingers. Open the joints, open your back, but don't move. Feel the spirit converting into emptiness. Take into your heels, but don't move. Reach down with your elbows, your wrists, fingers. Feel the yin, but don't move. Feel all those movements at once. But don't move. Feel the potentiality. That is just a thought of way, thought away from manifesting. Step in. Take a deep breath. Now sink into your heels. Undissolve the chi. Sink into the emptiness. Now, let's take that, those three levels, into our Brass Dragon Meditation. Step out. 
little wider than usual, a little wider than hip width. And you want a substantial base here. You're going to release down. Let's do the Ming part first. You're going to feel that uh, yeah. substantial, a little lower than usual, maybe. Just to feel that energy. Feel the yin chi rising through your feet and filling your body. Feel the yang chi of the heavens coming down and animating everything. Imagine your tail reaching behind you. Nice, long <clears throat> tail, very sinewy, very powerful tail. Feel those fingernails, feel your claws. And the ball to your feet and reach with your wrists. These are the fingers. Open your back. And your joints. You feel the ball of your right foot and spiral down to the left. You take your right hand you're reaching out with your right hand, pulling back with the fingernails in your left hand. Same time, you're reaching with your tail. And my tail is reaching out to my right as my right hand moves to my left. My whole body turns simultaneously. I'm reaching out, feeling that lengthening, feeling my the tensegrity of my body, my Sinews are are being tuned up, stretched like a uh, like a guitar string. You want to pull it to just the right amount of tension to get to be able to carry the uh, the vibrations to create the tone. Feel that connection between your tail. Just kind of wiggle the tail a little bit. Feel the fingernails and feel that connection through your body. Feel that. Now stick into your right heel. And then take your tail, wag it to the left. You're reaching with your tail and your left hand, fingernails, you're reaching across. Feel that. Feel that connection there. Your weight is more your right leg is the substantial leg you're probably about 70 30 weight distribution but more important is you're really using your right leg to support and provide the the structural support for the system you're wagging that tail reaching with that your tail behind you as your left hand is reaching forward your right hand is pulling down and back. Now I put your left heel and your right hand reaches out, your tail wags to the right as your right hand moves to the left. Reach, open your shoulder joints, reach with your elbows. Everything's opening, getting that connection Feel the power of that. Reach with the crown of your head. Back to center. Sink into your heels as you reach down. You 
feel the power, the Ming power, very obvious. Now let's go into the Anjin. Now, so, the ball to your feet, your arms come up very soft. Here we're taking the chi that we just created into the fingers, very soft. We're converting that chi into, into shen. So it's the same idea, only this time it's hidden. So I'm wagging my tail to the right as my right hand moves to the left. My left heel, my tail wags to the my tail wags to the left as my left hand moves to the right. The energy converts to shen. Right heel. I'm sorry, left heel and the right hand moves to the left, tail wags to the right. Very gently, very hidden, very soft. the center. Feel the energy has now moved into a higher frequency. It's even more insubstantial as it's converting into Shen. Sink at your heels. Softly reach down with your hands very gently. You feel that soft anjin. Feel the how insubstantial it makes your body feel. I'll do the Hua Jin from the Shen into emptiness. Feel the balls of your feet. Reach with your wrists, bring them up to chest height. Reach with your fingers, but don't move. Feel your tail behind you, but don't move. Reach with your left hand moving to the right as your tail moves to the left. Take into your right foot, but don't move. Bring it to your left heel. Wag your tail to the right, the right hand. 
the reaches and extends to the to the left, you know, your fingernails. And into your right heel. And your left hand moves to the right. Your tail moves to the left. But don't move. We have the potentiality of all those movements. Executing them all at once and not moving. Sink into your heels. And disappear all of that. Step in with your left foot. Take a deep breath. Inhale. Feel the yang expansion. Into your heels and exhale. Softly. Throw it all away. Empty out even more. Test your tolerance for emptiness. Please have a seat. Mm. Ah. How'd that work, guys? <laughs> Good. Thank you. Any thoughts, comments? Anything you'd like to share with? Yes, Richard. Uh, just really hard not to move. <laughs> Good. Good. That's that's the best. <laughs> Fabulous, because that's that's what creates the uh, creates the the, the chi. Beautiful. Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> Jonathan, and yet uh, there's sort of nothing but movement. It's like you take the skin encased ego and turn it into just vibration. The whole, and it's like. You know, we get our sense of solidity from the outside world. Objects, they're solid, so we're solid. We make ourselves, I think, more solid in relation when we think of ourselves as an object. But if we can feel ourselves as space then we're, and movement, then we're actually accessing what there is going on in them, even though we don't, you know, we don't see it except with high-powered, you know, magnification devices. But everything's moving like that. And so it's like... I don't know, it's like somehow closer to reality. <laughs> Being in this state of just vibrating for, for 10 minutes like that. Because whatever we were doing, that never stopped. The motion inside never, never stops, which is very cool. And, and then since we're not you know, doing all these different forms, we're, we're just that being of movement. You know, we're creating a being more than like, oh, watch me dance or move or you know, do something. So that's that's very cool stuff. I I could I, I could do a lot of this with you. I really like this. <laughs> Great. Good.
But I, I really want to emphasize that the Ming part is just as important as the Hua. You know, well, it, it gets it all going. I mean, I, I, I agree. I mean, it's the entry kind of into it. But it's also it returns to that. It you go you go to the Hua, and then what's the next step? Ming. So it's mm. it's you know it it's a constant cycle where every piece of that puzzle is equally important, and you know we. We tend to glorify the Hua because it's the rarest of the three for, to our own minds. And we say, oh, that one, I want that one because I don't have that one. But it's, you know, it's no more important than, than the solidity. It's no more important than the substance. I, I hear you. But isn't it a little bit like when we come back to the Ming in the end, you know, we, we, we return to where we began and know the place for the first time. It's kind of very much so. Very yeah, much so. so we, we return to the Ming with a different sense than when we started out, you know. So. Absolutely, absolutely. And we, if we can appreciate the Ming even more because we visited this, the emptiness and mm -hmm. say, oh, there ain't nothing here in the emptiness. <laughs> I want some stuff, hey, right. give me some stuff, you know? And then you go back and, and you, you do a dance with stuff and then you say, Okay, that was great. Now let's do some non stuff, and then we go do that dance for a while. And I think the our capacity to be able to appreciate all these different levels of substantial and insubstantial is the key to our our kung fu. Scott. Yeah, so once again, you've taken us to the place beyond words and then want us to make words. But uh, <laughs> uh, let's talk about it, guys. <laughs> um, what you were just saying about it being a cycle, I didn't that I didn't really grok that until just now. Um, and uh, that's that's very helpful. And it's not, um, not that we go to emptiness and disappear. It's no, no. We use that to go back, and the insubstantial informs and creates the substantial. And as Jonathan says, but if you you do it, you know, from a higher perspective, from from a perspective of greater knowing. And then you appreciate the substantial even more at that point. It's I've said this before, but it's like um, my continuum teacher said that you know it's a spiral, right? So you're going around and you're hitting the same spots, but the spiral is going up. Right. So you're hitting the same spot, but from a different spot, and yeah, so you can. That's, really... that's an eloquent way of putting it. So yes, yeah. we're constantly you're know, looking. We, we go to the north side of the mountain again. We're circling around it, but this time we're looking at the north, you know, the north side, you know, from the north side, you know, out, and things look a little different because we're at a different level of, uh, of, uh, you know, our energy is, is at a different level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little harder this time to um, make the words. Make the words. Uh, <laughs> It's like when you said, okay, let's sit down. And it's like, Boy, kids. <laughs> I can't really walk. <laughs> I can't really walk yet. But, you know, it's like, okay, I could follow the directions. Yes. Um, so it, it's it's a really cool, I won't even say practice. Because it's it's not just a practice. It, it's beyond that. Um I consider it a template, you know, okay. that, a, a template for that thing that the Cheng Ma Ching was talking about. Those three levels, you know, it's not. Oh, I get I get to the top level and then you know I have omnipotence and and I can forget about doing my form now. It's like no, no, you can't. You know, you take that and you you bring it back to inform your the doing and. And just as language articulating this stuff is Ming. It's, it's we're, we're taking we're taking something which is insubstantial 
and we're trying to convert it into language so we can talk about this stuff amongst each other. And uh, and so it becomes, that's that's the obvious part. That's like, oh, we were creating thought forms and sharing them with each other. But we know that those thought forms are, you know, they, they are um, arbitrary conventions that we have kind of agreed upon and then we can, but they're going to change the next time we do something cool. So, uh, what what those even those words, what those words mean the next time we go through it, it's like, yeah, I, I thought I knew what that word meant, but not so much now. It's a it's a little different. It looks different from this perspective, like you're saying, Scott. Nick, you're you're on mute. There you go. Yeah. So. So I'm hesitant to say this, but um, a, a kind of visual image for me of this is that it's it's like a three-legged stool, um, which may not make sense to anybody else, but it's it's like the cycle is what supports the state that I find myself in, which is an altered state. Um, when you go through this process and, and, and to stay in that state, you have to keep repeating that process. So you have to keep all the legs even as they grow, right? right. <laughs> you oh. keep going around. So. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, it's, you know, it works in my weird brain, but you know. <laughs> yeah. And the state you're talking about, I'm going to assume it's a fluid state. Yes. It's not it's not a static state. It's not a fixed state. It's not like, oh, I got to the happy place. I'm going to stay there. It's like, no, no, I got to the happy place. And now I'm going to go and do something else. I'm going to go and get some get into some mischief now. And uh, <laughs> so, so then I can create some new some new stuff. And so I'm never locked into this one fixed state and say, oh, I found it. You know, I've got I've got the exact right state. And then Everything else doesn't matter. It's like no, no, it all matters, and and we're just this is just a tool, like you say. It 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 allows you to um, to take your three legged stool with with you wherever you go, <laughs> and <laughs> and be able to uh, to you know to use it. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. The exact right state would depend on your circumstances where right. what what yeah. you're intending and what you're where you are where you are, are what you're doing and being you know exactly exactly and uh, and never more so than in your kung fu because you know <laughs> particularly when you enter other human beings into your perfect state <laughs> things <laughs> change things change you know immediately by just by adding another human there I'm like oh i have to deal with that energy now too and so um the you know the perfect state that i had imagined for myself you know it doesn't exist anymore because now i have this other uh, this other being that i have to to, to, to talk to <laughs> yeah other being. i need a different perfect state <laughs> <laughs> richard you, you had your hand up sharon does no. No. Okay, Sharon. Well, it's continuing on with me. As I just sit there with my eyes closed, I feel as though I'm going through all, I feel, I'm just feeling like I'm going through all the cycles. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. That's, that's, that's it. And that's, we want to get, and this is kind of what, what Nick was saying, you get so comfortable with the, that, those cycles yeah, you know, at the different levels of insubstantial, of substantial and insubstantial, that yeah, you can reach out and manifest whichever one you you like you you need in that particular moment or you want in that particular moment. And what effect do I want to create? What how am I uh, how am I engaged with with uh, with life in that particular moment? And what's the appropriate energy for this situation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
great. Okay. Well, thank you all so much. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, and uh, let's let's do some more. Um, thank you, Maria. Thank yeah. you, Maria. Yeah, you were okay. Fun with the game. Cool. <laughs>